feel like for me, it feels seamless because you prepared for so long, but it's just like you guys prepping for a game. That's the fun part. That's where it's like, fuck, it's fun, man. People are paying their hard-earned dollars to come see you. They're cheering, they're going bananas, they're booing the shit out of you or on the road. It's, that's fun. That's what you live for. I mean, that's the juice right there. The prep is where the character's made. And I just don't mean the character I play, I mean the fucking, the character in here. So for me, the prep is getting with the director, getting with the producers, getting with the writers, getting with the, getting with, so in essence, it's like getting with all your coaches and your different uh, position coaches and, and all the meetings that you have to have, right? So that's the work you put in. The key for me was, where does it start? What's the anchor? What's the anchor? So I could have all these ambitions and you guys have all these ambitions, which is great. It's important. I'll play this role. You'll play that role. I'll execute this thing and it'll come out this summer. You guys will execute this thing during the summer, right? When it's time to really put in a lot more work. But the key with me is just always finding what the anchor is. And the fucking anchor is getting up at four o'clock in the morning every day before anybody else and grounding my thought process is in the no one will outwork me. No one. I love and I respect you guys. You motherfuckers won't outwork me. All starts with this. Two hands, putting it to work. The anchor for me has always been the work in terms of the weight room training. So when I first started wrestling, I was six years old, rolling on the mats with my dad. My old man, a lot of you guys won't know this. Yeah, Rocky Johnson. <laughs> My old man was Rocky Johnson. He was the first black WWF tag, WWF at that time. First black WWE tag team champions with Tony Atlas back in 1983. Uh, my uncles were the Wild Samoans. I come from a long line of pro wrestlers. Um, but before the wrestling part happened, uh, I was just in the gym putting in the work. At six years old, rolling around on the mats. And finally, when I could touch weights at 13, that's what I was doing. But the weight part for me and the gym part has has always been, has to be the anchor for me. Because again, it allows me, what's that? Yeah, yeah. It allows me to keep everything grounded. But then also, you know, look, I think too, I think, yeah, this is crazy, that's what happens. You get the strength coach in here. <laughs> the beat! Get in there. I went to Gunner's gym one time, we first moved to, uh, LA about a year ago, man. He, he's like, come here, DJ, look at this thing. He picked this thing up and I was like, God damn, man, what? And there's pulley here and the thing coming out of the fucking <laughs> garage there. Like, look at this, it feels good, right? Like, I can't. <laughs> uh, yes, it feels good. I can't, I can't. Um, look, boys, event, your body's your body, right? You're young now, you're balling, everything feels good. You have your little nicks and dings and all that shit. You're gonna have that, you're gonna have your surgeries. Right? We all have it. Uh, but, if, but eventually, and I promise you this, the one thing that will never, ever, ever go away is you get your ass in that weight room and you put in the work. That's gonna happen when you're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That never goes away. You'll get on the court, you shoot some shots, but you still, you're gonna wind up right back in the weight room, right? Right back in your spot. Film has the, gives me the biggest opportunity to make the biggest impact, global impact. I don't want to make small movies. I love and respect our movie business, but I want to make big movies that do well. And when they do well, it's not the money thing, because we have money, right? Money's good. Money's good. It ebbs and flows. It's the idea that I can impact as many people as possible with a big global movie. And when the global movie is touching a billion dollars, that sounds good, right? It's good for the bank account. It's good for everybody involved. Everybody's getting their piece of cake. It's great. But what that does do, it, I know I'm impacting people around the world by giving them some good entertainment, making them feel good, leaving the theater floating. So it's the same thing, right? When you guys have this bigger goal, say for example, when you become world champions again, <clears throat> as polarized as the sports world is, it's a fucking incredibly inspiring thing, even if they're not fans of your team. Even if they're not fans of your team. So think about that, you know, when you guys do that, the impact that that has, the ripple effect that that has for the city of LA, California, the United States, the globe, little kids, damn, I want to be that one day. 
favorite WWE moment would probably be, I've, I've had a lot of them, and uh, got really, really lucky. I think probably uh, the matches I had with Stone Cold Steve Austin, yeah, they were really good, and we wound up, we just had a real special chemistry. Um, and anytime we got in the ring, it, was, it created this kind of magic, and we broke a lot of records and pay-per-view records. At that time, WWE, they, they were still in the pay-per-view model and the pay-per-view business. They're not now. But that was always cool because we had a goal. Steve and I had a goal, which was let's, let's, uh, let's sell out a stadium and let's break a pay-per-view record. But it was always cool with him because then always, too, you know, he was the kind of guy who, and you guys have this, you have this amongst your team, you have this amongst players in the league, where that guy... Uh, former Texas football player, West Texas State down, so he was crazy, uh, but he would push me, and we would push each other every night. You know, and the thing that the WWE taught me, <clears throat> which I think you guys can take away and it can apply to a little bit of your practice and your business and your gameplay, is WWE taught me to always listen to the people. You always want to listen to the people. So when I would go out, um, you know, look, you go out, there's always a lot of ego and you, uh, you know, I want to do my shit. And then another wrestler would say, oh, I want to do my shit. And I want to do my finishing move. I want to do my finishing move. I got to look good. I got to do all this. <clears throat> my last match in WWE, I'll share this with you guys too, is that, again, because there's a little bit of takeaway here from all this shit, is I wrestled John Cena. And I went in, and I think it was 2013. I went in WWE champion. And uh, we went in MetLife Stadium. We... We had a record-breaking attendance, which was amazing that night. We accomplished our goal. So I wrestled with John Cena. We had 45 minutes planned for the match. It's nonstop go, right? So your conditioning is tested. And at that time, I, I wasn't full-time in WWE. I was just doing these spot matches where I, would, I was still shooting G.I. Joe, I think, or Pain and Gain at that time. Or, I, oh no, it was, um, it was Fast and Furious 6 in London. Had to travel in the ring, get all my ring work in, travel back to shoot. Uh, Fast and Furious, then back, WWE Raw, doing those shows, the big build-up to WrestleMania against John. We get to MetLife Stadium, it's a big night, this is it, it's game night, right? It's, it's, it's championship night for me. 45-minute match planned out. There's no cut, there's no, all right, well, let's pick it back up tomorrow, you know, it's go time, it's just like you guys in a game. At the 15-minute mark, bang! feel something pop, I'm like, boom, what the fuck? I'm laying there, and both of us are out. I said, oh fuck, something's going on. And uh, I stick my hand, now there's 85,000 people, right? And we're just laid out like this. I kind of roll over, I stick my hand down in my trunks just to see, I want to make sure that there was no bone sticking out. So if there's no bone sticking out, what the fuck, something just happened. Referee comes over and he's like, Rock, you all right? And I'm like, yeah, 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 I think I'm all right. I said, fuck. I get up, I go to step, and I, I can't step. I can't do this. I have to use my leg like momentum. I gotta do that. So now in that moment, and you guys are gonna have these moments, you probably already had them already, where you're in the game and you're in the thick of things, and you gotta make a decision. What I gotta do? I'm gonna stay in the game, I committed to the team, I committed to my team, the whole entire roster, right? <clears throat> and in the world of wrestling, when you have a big show like this and you have a big main event that the entire show is based around, the wrestlers will come up to the two people in the main event at some point all throughout the night in the locker room and just be like, hey, thank you for the house. I appreciate it. Thank you for the house. And what that means is that's their way of saying thank you for drawing, helping draw 85,000 people and putting a lot of fucking money in my paycheck, in my bank account. Thank you for the house. We got a lot of thank you for the houses that night. <clears throat> bang, this happens and now I realize I can't move my leg. And I got 30 minutes left of this match. And it's not just like fucking around. I mean, these are like, we, we gotta put on a show. There's a lot of big flying and suplexes and all that. So I could tell the rest says, are you okay? And I have one moment, in this moment, it was a defining moment. I could either tell him, no, I'm done. He'd give the signal, match is over. Or, let's keep going. And again, this is a little takeaway for you guys. If you ever have this moment, I'm sure you have. If you haven't, it's coming. We have this decision. And I said, no, let's keep going. I said, how much time is left? He's like, 32 minutes. I'm like, fuck, okay. Wrestled the whole match. <clears throat> Couldn't move. 
doing everything like this. I'm getting scared because I'm thinking, man, well, what happens if I, if I, if I pinch something or something like, you know, I don't know, your mind starts fucking with you in the moment. There's 85,000 people, your adrenaline's rushing. I'm thinking, man, what happens if I'm gonna lose my leg or some shit like this, if I've just done something to my artery? Final move of the match is his big finishing move. <clears throat> and I remember I'm getting up and I'm turning like this because I have to fall into him. He's going to hit me with his big finisher. It's like a massive suplex where I go over his head and fucking slams me down. And I remember turning, I remember turning into John and he says, and I remember thinking to myself, God, please don't let this be too bad. Just take care of me. Take care of me. Bang! I feel... Boom! And I don't know what the fuck just happened. Now, luckily, the match is over. He pins me. One, two, three. Comes in the back. I get to the back. I can't move. Now I'm getting a little nervous. <clears throat> and um, doctors come in. John comes in. You okay? He, he comes in. We always like to celebrate with booze. He, he brings, like, moonshine. Like, legit moonshine. <laughs> it's like crazy white boy shit that they bring. <laughs> like, in a, in a jar. This is moonshine. Hey, let's have some moonshine. It's okay. <clears throat> don't know what's happening, rush, uh, get on a jet, rushed home to my doctor's down in Florida, and uh, get an MRI, find out that I have completely torn my adductor, the top of my, my adductor and my top of my quad off my pelvis. Yes, really, really fucked up. So it's a very long story to tell you. What I was proud of was to walk out on my own, but not only that, but in this fucking moment where the odds are against you, people are watching, your team's depending on you, you either say, I'm done, or this shit, whatever the fuck is going on, it's temporary, and it may fuck me up at some point down the road, but I'm not gonna let this opportunity go by without giving it my 